Hello, me, Henry Keane, UATV English is usually online and in the air. Alexander Kerra, diplomat, foreign affairs and security policy expert in sense of defense strategies. Well, the topic is China meeting foreign ministers, Ukraine and China. Do we really have... Alexander, hello. Hello. I, I, I have so many questions, so I forgot to say hello. So, um, what do we expect from this? I mean, China, foreign ministers meet... Do, is that, you know, more like a gesture of they have to or there is a certain interest between the country? Yes, for sure. If uh, we are talking about political realism, right, it means right. that there is a chaos. International relations, there are states uh, who are actors and the, those states uh, pursue their national interests by accumulating national power and uh, applying it. So certainly we have uh, interest uh, in Ukraine like bringing this war to an end and to bring uh, just and lasting peace uh, to Ukraine. Uh, the Chinese have their other goals, uh, which are different to Ukrainian ones. Uh, they don't want uh, Russia to lose because Russia is uh, the no-limit partner to China. And they have the strategic goals of uh, trying to push the United States out of this political structure right. and China certainly dreams uh, to become a hegemon in the world. So that's why they pursued their, uh, or, or, let's say, interest uh, by proposing alternative to Ukrainian plans, mm. by pushing uh, diplomatic effort. Uh, while we speak, uh, the Chinese representative uh, just visited uh, Brazil and now he's on the way to South Africa, Indonesia, right. with this uh, Chinese-Brazilian six-point plan. And they're trying to push it uh, uh, contrary to the plan and contrary to the peace uh, uh, conference that was held in uh, Switzerland. And certainly Ukraine and our partners are uh, uh, organizing them. So it's a concrete thing. But uh, w w what is common that we are trying to find a way uh, how to stop this exactly. war. And we focus on what's, uh, what's come after that. And we want uh, the simple things uh, that the international law... Uh, begins to work again. And it's completely different thing that the Russians want. They want uh, the international law to be abandoned and the rule or, of might or, uh, to, to be imposed. And, and certainly Chinese are trying to be a broker. Uh, they are, don't want to offend the, the Russians. They don't want uh, Russians to, you know, to, 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 to be defeated on the battlefield. And at the same time, they want to portray themselves as a sort of an unbiased, impartial broker who wants uh, to preserve uh, uh, peace and international system based on the rules and right. principles. Right, well, do, please educate me. I do not understand why Russia, why China does not want Russia to lose, because China obviously would have more control after Russia loses. Why am I wrong? Uh, no. Uh, first of all, uh, the, there is no reason for Chinese to physically control anything in, in Russia, like uh, Siberia. Right. Uh, so they can do it uh, uh, in the long term by uh, expanding their influence, economic and right. other type of influence. Secondly, uh, having such a partner, the, the junior partner, uh, it would be much easier for China to, uh, let's say, confront the West in general and the United States okay. particularly if uh, Xi Jinping decides it's a window of opportunity to seize uh, Taiwan like, uh, uh, like Putin did in 2014 uh, in illegal annex in Crimea. Crimea right, so right, he may right. do this and uh, Russia may, let's say, uh, may, may just like hedge all those risks uh, related to this uh, action. Like Russia is the one of the uh, largest nuclear powers. And even in 2014 and 2022, they were threatening our Western partners with the possible uh, employment of uh, nuclear arms. So if there is a something uh, going on in South China Sea uh, with regard to Taiwan, uh, Russia may play the same game uh, more seriously and certainly it will, be, it will affect the decisions in, in those people who are in Washington. All right. So are you saying that uh, China is not really interested in, in peace because you said peace deception plan. I remember that before we start the recording. So what do you mean? Uh, that's right. Uh, if we have a look at the uh, Chinese position uh, on the Ukrainian crisis, as right. they call the full-fledged uh, Russian aggression. So they call it 
Crisis. Crisis, yes. Yeah. And what's interesting, uh, even before that, uh, uh, th there were three uh, General Assembly, United Nations General Assembly resolutions, uh, first in 2014 on the illegal annexation of Crimea on territorial integrity yeah. of Ukraine, and then in 2022 about aggression and then about uh, just a lasting peace, uh, China abstained in three uh, those votes. So if uh, China is so, uh, let's say, uh, is so believe, uh, it believes in the, in the UN Charter and the principles uh, of, of international law, why uh, the Chinese did not call the war or aggression uh, aggression? War aggression? aggression. Uh, why they uh, abstained when the, mm. the issue of territorial integrity was mentioned? So uh, in, uh, in 2023, uh, in, in, in February, they proposed 12-point plan, uh, which started with the uh, uh, respect for territorial integrity and sovereignty of, of all nations. They did mention Ukraine. And you know, uh, we, have, okay. we are in Ukraine. It's a former Soviet uh, Republic. So we remember this uh, double speak, which is the, the Soviet or communist yeah, yeah, double yeah. speak. And uh, certainly in you speak, I would say. Uh, so uh, it's mean that Chinese are talking about Taiwan and the Chinese territorial integrity and sovereignty, not about Ukraine. Because if it's Obviously. a document yes. dedicated yes. to Ukraine, yes. Ukraine should be mentioned. Secondly, uh, there is no uh, plan how Chinese are going to uh, exert pressure over Russia to withdraw from the illegally occupied territory, starting from Crimea yeah. and then back to Donetsk, Lugansk, yeah. Zaporizhia and, and Kherson regions. So uh, just uh, stating the simple facts that you know, international law does not allow to annex uh, territories and does not allow to, to wage aggressive wars, uh, it doesn't mean that the Chinese are interested in genuine peace. And while uh, we are fighting, uh, our partners, the United States and uh, European partners and some other, up to 50 countries are supporting us within the uh, Rammstein process, uh, they are uh, dedicating resources to Ukraine. It means that uh, the uh, American partners in the Indo-Pacific uh, has less uh, resources to rely on. The Americans need to waste this time and, and, and resources uh, supporting Ukraine while China is building up uh, in the South China Sea and just like yeah. building a uh, nuclear force and a missile force and so on and so on. So that's why uh, this war to some extent is advantage uh, for China because it's buying cheap Russian uh, oil. Of course, but there's Something enormous like 49 advantage. 49 percent of the Russian exactly, exports exactly. uh, uh, goes Trillions to, of dollars are flowing in China. So. Uh, the, the, it's impossible to believe that this uh, is a superpower. China obviously is a superpower. Oh, no. We it's not. It's a, it's a great power. A superpower, it's a, the one, according to international okay. uh, re relation theory, it's this, uh, such a state that may set the rules and enforce uh, their, uh, let's say, fulfillment. We're we talking about United States. Uh, United States is uh, it's losing this role. Uh, it's not going to disappear, for sure. But the United States uh, need to focus on several areas. Like uh, Barack Obama decided to move from Europe and the Middle East. Right. He said the private to China policy is is, is really important. So we see this crisis uh, in the Middle East okay. and we, 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 we saw we the, the war of aggression of against Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So it's a result mm -hmm. of the diminishing power of the United States and shifting priority into Asia. So the United States may set the rules and, in, and enforce their implication in some areas, but not globally. And now the United States needs to have allies because you know, just some 10 years ago, 20 years ago, the United States uh, could, could have uh, you know, do, did something that was not uh, possible, uh, what, what I'm saying. So the United States needs the alliance uh, as never before. Mm. Uh, they cannot go on their own to con con right. uh, confront China or any other actor. They need to, to build this alliance. So that's why Chinese are playing in, in using this. They understand that uh, while the United States is supporting us, uh, they don't have enough uh, focus in mm, the, in right, the uh, right. So, are, well, if Chinese obviously understand that, so they are trying to become a superpower. Is that true or not really? Uh, well, we, we can play with words, but uh, in yeah. general, they, they, they would love to replace the United States okay. as a hegemon. Okay, well, right. But if we have a look uh, at uh, the transcripts of the conversation between uh, Xi Jinping and uh, Joseph Biden, Xi Jinping proposed to, to divide the world into parts. He, he said that you know, the world is uh, uh, big enough for two nations to, to, you know, to cooperate oh, and uh, to strive. But the, what's interesting is that uh, Joseph Biden did not agree on that.
uh, when he was asked whether uh, Xi Jinping is a dictator, he said, yes, uh, it's a communist dictator. It means that uh, Joseph Biden and his administration are keen to, you know, to, to be on the side of the values rather than on spheres of influence, right. which uh, Xi Jinping proposed to him. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, for, for the explanation. I didn't mean to play with words. What I wanted to ask is, uh, like, while powers or superpowers are playing their roles, what is the role of Ukraine? How can we get into this game and get what we want, which is just and lasting peace? And not just, you know, peace on their terms, but a peace on our terms that will allow us to, to build a proper army because Russia will always be an enemy, obviously. And we have to get ready. I believe, this is my opinion, and I believe 40 million of Ukrainians are also trust in that. So what do we do diplomatically? Do we have a place there to set our own rules? How will we play the game where the big boys are playing? Oh, well, certainly in 2014, uh, Ukraine regained this agency and in 2022 uh, regained it again uh, because, no, we went against the wind, we, we against the, the fate, we, we just faced the threat and we, 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 we stand up to, to the, the threat of uh, extinction from the Russian side right. because this right. war is a genocidal war for sure and Russia and majority of Russians, not just Putin and, and uh, the, the, his uh, minions, but majority of Russians uh, do not want to see Ukraine as an independent uh, state. They do not believe that there is such, such a nation. So um, we have done a great job showing that we are not uh, you know, in line with this policy. We are going to fight. Secondly, it's good that uh, Europe and uh, uh, our American and other partners uh, finally realize that uh, it's not just like a border dispute between Russia mm. and Ukraine, mm. that something existential is going on here. It's about the existence of Ukraine, security of Europe, but most importantly, about the norms and principles of international law. Because if you have a look at the UN Charter, OEC, OEC Final Act, and a bunch of other international agreements which China and Russia is part of, right. uh, they are talking about uh, a non-threat of uh, use of force or uh, non-use of force. Uh, do not, uh, they are not allowed to annex other territories. So it's so important in Ukraine to stop Russia uh, with the aim to stop other uh, rough uh, uh, nations and rough uh, powers. Uh, to, yeah, and the next... dictators are closely watching. Yes, yeah, so, so that's, why, that's why we're part of that. Mm. And then mm. certainly we need to mobilize our support once again, showing that we are capable of winning this war on the battlefield. Because the most important thing is on the battlefield. The Russians understand only uh, uh, strengths and f f strengths of other nations. They can, 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 can be stopped. Uh, and, and certainly by helping us, it's a, a strong signal to Xi Jinping not to play with uh, Taiwan, and, but better engage in diplomacy with the uh, Taiwanese government, not to do okay. uh, for other, uh, in, let's say, tyrants yeah. and authoritarian uh, leaders to Focus. interfere uh, in, into the domestic affairs of other nations or to conquer other nations. So that's why Ukraine is uh, pivotal for the, uh, let's say, preserving international law and preserving the uh, whole idea that uh, this world, uh, our international system, is based on rules, not on the, uh, let's say, brutal force. And certainly in this case, uh, Ch China, Russia and some other uh, would do anything they want and undermine the, the interests of other nations and it will be chaos and it will be war uh, of all against the wall. So is it working, what Ukraine is doing? Is, is China understand, does China understand that it's better to engage into diplomacy than war? Or China is okay to preserve status quo. Like whatever happens, we're having like trillions of dollars coming in because Russia is not winning, not losing, just going down, slowly sinking as a Moskva cruiser or whatever. Um, uh, well, Where are they we? pretend to be an impartial and biased uh, mediator, uh, and they're trying to torpedo pretend our... To be. Absolutely, because mm. now their plan with Brazil now, and, and previously by, by China itself, drafted by China itself, uh, they're, they're, it's like a competitor to the Ukrainian plan. Okay. And in the six-point plan, uh, the sovereignty and territorial integrity point is missing. So they start with a season of uh, uh, hostilities mm. with uh, that... Uh, the civilians should not be targeted, which is like a statement. Yeah, absolutely, uh, well, it's a fact. What about the sovereignty and the freedoms? Just yeah, yeah, but, but okay, let's let's just forget about sovereignty. Uh, <laughs> uh, civilians should not be targeted. It's obvious according to international law. But what is the uh, punishment uh, for targeting civilians? 
And the Chinese never accepted the idea of sanctions against Russia. They were mm. portraying it like Russians, actually, uh, that it's like a, uh, it's an, an unfair c competition from the uh, Western powers right. w w in, in the economic sphere with Russia. They were not seeing it as like a punishment for uh, for the act of aggression and, and, and genocidal war and some other things. Right. So that's why w when Chinese are trying to, to portray their their, their, their well, impartial uh, negotiator, no, they are rather advocates uh, of Russia. They don't want to invest too much in Russia because uh, here uh, the United States and Europe uh, comes into play because uh, China depends on the markets. China depends on the what access to technology, point? investments, and some other things. And as uh, particularly after COVID-19 lockdown and absolutely terrible uh, in, in China, and we, we've seen uh, people are rioting against uh, the government. It's the, for the first time uh, well, in Ever the in China, yes. Yes, yes. And, and now uh, we see that uh, there is, a, let's say, it's not, it's not called the coupling it's called the risking but anyway whatever you call it uh, the western uh, countries are reducing their reliance on the uh, uh, chinese market chinese technologies and uh, uh, Ch 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 chinese economy in, in general it's mean less uh, investment in china and less technologies so chinese need to keep this uh, gdp uh, growing with the aim to keep the same level of uh, let's say welfare for uh, their own citizens who are actually aging and uh, this is another problem and actually, it, it, it was mm. caused mm. by the stupid policy of one child uh, in, in one fa family. But what I'm saying, the Chinese could not, uh, no, uh, openly support Russia and provide them with weapons. That's they right. are providing uh, with money point. and with dual use right. goods. Yeah. But uh, they don't want to undermine these trade relations with the European Union and the United States. And they don't want to be uh, to be under the Uni United States uh, sanctions, particularly secondary sanctions. And that's why Chinese companies are just uh, cutting uh, off. Uh, relations and uh, contacts with, uh, with the Russian banks and other companies when right. there is a fear of, of sanctions. So they don't want to, uh, Russia to lose. At, at the same time, they cannot uh, support Russia to, ex to the extent uh, Putin uh, would love yeah, to. Sure. You are living in a dangerous and quite a um, challenging world. Mr. Kara. We are living. We are living, but you are dwelling in, I mean, too deep and you're it's so interesting. But May I ask you a question? If you would be offered a position of ambassador of Ukraine in China, what would be your first decision? Oh, well, it's quite a challenge. Uh, it is quite uh, a uh, challenge, uh, isn't it? Uh, now you just told me that well, we are actually, living in this actually, world. I, I, would, I would refuse uh, this proposal because, firstly, I do not speak Chinese mm -hmm. and it's difficult to, to represent uh, the, the, the country. But say you speak Chinese. Uh, Don't okay. avoid my question. Uh, well, uh, so it's, it would be a challenging uh, tenure in, in Beijing uh, for the simple mm. reason. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a welcoming environment. China, uh, even though it's to some extent capitalist country, but it's run by communists. And we in Ukraine suffered from communism a lot. <laughs> Up to six million people were starved to death during the Holodomor uh, genocide. So uh, certainly it's, communism is not something that I like. Uh, a lot of Ukrainians. Uh, secondly, the Chinese uh, strategy uh, uh, and actually their vision of Ukraine uh, is not that different to Russia. Remember that uh, the Chinese ambassador to France uh, once said that uh, Ukraine and some other former Soviet U uh, Union countries mm. uh, do not have the full sovereignty. So they believe that Russia is a mighty country and the rest who just like uh, became independent in 1991 are not really country. You just it, satellites. It's something. it's something like uh, the, like uh, Putin told uh, to uh, George Bush that you know, they are not even a country uh, referring to Ukraine. So this whole view uh, is, is different. And then uh, we understand that uh, uh, the China is a, is a really, really important uh, global economic uh, uh, actor. And a lot of countries, including Saudi Arabia, Arabia who is the major supplier of uh, oil to uh, China, Just by the way. Uh, they depend on, on, on the Chinese mood. <laughs> and certainly it's difficult for Ukraine uh, w with less, uh, let's say, opportunities to just uh, to, 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 to make it clear what's important for us and to, to, to just to pursue our uh, national interests uh, to, 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 to do something right, in Beijing. Right. But anyway, any, anyone uh, appointed to Beijing should, uh, should be guided by the national interests uh, of Ukraine. 
Uh, it could be not really pleasant uh, now. Yeah, uh, I, sure can, I can imagine what our ambassador I'm in sure Hungary is doing, and this uh, this country, and actually it's a Trojan horse uh, of Russia and China within the European Union and NATO. But anyway, uh, there is a, some space uh, to do and uh, to convey to the Chinese general public, sure. even though it's yeah. controlled by the com communist uh, organs, that Ukraine is a uh, separate nation. We are a proud nation, we are a powerful nation. And actually, I talked to a Chinese uh, journalist um, a couple months ago, and she said, you cannot imagine, even with the censorship that we have, but uh, a lot of Chinese respect you for the reason that you rise against uh, the, the bigger, uh, bigger, bigger power. And you are yeah. fighting, and uh, the way how you're fighting, innovative way, and the, the way how you're joking about this uh, war, uh, it just uh, gives uh, huge respect among, among Ch Chinese. But certainly China is not a democratic country, that's why we cannot rely on the Chinese general public and uh, by talking to them, changing mm. their uh, mood and m mind, uh, and that they, they can be, uh, you know, uh, they can influence uh, sure. the, the government. Sure. My last question for tonight. Um, do you believe, just using the opportunity to talk to someone who understands in China at least more than I do, um, do you believe that you said China is not a democracy and it certainly is not and it is an autocracy, autocratic communist regime. Do you believe it ever won't be that way? Do you believe that China would ever come to some way of democracy, some sort of democracy? Mm, I have uh, doubts. Uh, they might be a, a less aggressive uh, than under the leadership of Xi Jinping right. because you know, when he came to power, they decided to uh, revise all those old uh, norms and old Probably. ideas of you know getting richer and not you know uh, sh showing up uh, their strengths. So uh, Xi Jinping decided that on his watch, China should uh, reunite with Taiwan and China should become a hegemon in Asia and certainly uh, in, in, in the whole uh, world. Uh, but anyway, uh, if we have a look at Taiwan, which is way more democratic than the rest of uh, countries around uh, China, sure. it means that it's not up to the Chinese culture uh, that uh, they are not able to be democratic uh, countries, but it's possibly to something else. So if uh, Ta Taiwanese are successful in their democracy, mm. it's meant in some distant future, after the uh, communist uh, project uh, would collapse, uh, the Chinese may uh, change that. And actually the same thing uh, is true to Russia. Russia has never Here experienced democracy in its uh, entire history, except of brief period of time in 1917, after the, uh, the, uh, the revolution. Uh, uh, but I don't think that uh, the Russians are so different uh, with a different DNA that are not capable of uh, living under the democracy. But I uh, know uh, several things uh, should happen. First and foremost, Russia should be punished for its crime because impunity is one of the reasons of this war. Absolutely. They've been committing genocide against its own population throughout centuries and now in the 21st century against Ukraine. Secondly, they should understand that uh, China, uh, Russia is not chosen. It's not the third Rome. It's not the center of the world. It's just an uh, average country. And actually, if you're talking about econ economic development, it's less than average country, actually. Sure. But uh, this uh, sense of uh, being chosen by the God or whatever, or the size, uh, it's something that is driven. The same thing in China. Mm. It's, it was a Chinese uh, uh, academic that uh, forged this um, term uh, civil civilizational state. Mm. So they believe that the current Chinese Communist Party is a hair to all those uh, states that uh, no, existed before, beginning from those uh, rivaling uh, uh, kingdoms, empire, exactly. which is not true because no communism is something that is not in line with uh, monarchy or kingdom. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and certainly there was a period of time when and we, we see in Taiwan that they, they have a different path. So, so all those things and certainly political culture is something that uh, stops uh, China and uh, Russia from being democratic. But after the, those ideas, their design for their country, or their greatness uh, uh, would collapse, uh, they will rethink their history and political culture and possibly will turn to a more democratic way. Alexander, thank you so very much for thank your time you for having me. and for your experience and we are happy to have you. As soon as we have more questions, and we have, we just don't have more time this time. I'm glad that you're here and I would, I welcome you anytime when you have. Thank the, you for the, the invitation. For that. Thank you so very much. Thank you.
The guy was Alexander Hara, diplomat, foreign affairs and security policy expert at Center for Defense Strategies of Ukraine. Thank you so very much. And we are UATV English and me, Henry Keane. See you very soon. Stay tuned. Goodbye.